This is the third time I've tried to film this video because first time didn't work, didn't say everything I wanted. Second time, battery cut off and I still didn't say everything I wanted to say. So third time's the charm. Hi, my name is Savannah and today I'm going to be reviewing Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Now, as you can see from the title, I wasn't the biggest fan of this book, but I want you to have an open mind as I go through this because I know this is really a hyped up book and everyone loves it, but I just want you to hear my thoughts and opinions of it. Now, I actually got into the mood to read this book because I was sent Kristen from over at What's Happening's Traveling Ready Player One book. Basically, you just kind of write in it, put your thoughts and feelings in it, and that's what I did. I actually mostly listen to the audiobook for this and then after a couple chapters I would go back and I would kind of skim read what I, we had just gone through and then I would write little notes, respond to people, and do other stuff. So if you haven't read Ready Player One and you want to, DM me on Twitter or on YouTube and I can send this your way. Like I said before, Ready Player One is probably one of the most hyped up books on booktube that I've ever seen. Everyone is in love with it and going into this I think I had a lot of expectations about what was going to happen and it kind of let me down because I thought too much about what was gonna go on. One of the main reasons why I didn't like this book was because of our main character Wade. I didn't like a lot of his thoughts and feelings about certain things and I thought that I just didn't want to read from his perspective at all. I didn't really want to know him as a character. I didn't root for him. The whole point of this story is that Halliday hides this easter egg which is going to grant you millions and millions of dollars and respect from the community. Hid an easter egg in this oasis which is a virtual reality MMO type of thing and Wade is essentially trying to find the easter egg and I didn't want him to find it. Some of the things Wade would say I would kind of just cringe and I would just eye roll. I think one of the more ones that I remember was he was talking about geeky girls and just the thought of him kind of explaining why he liked geeky the girls was just very annoying and I hated it. <laughs> also, the pacing of this book is very weird in spots. The beginning is super slow. Super slow. If I hadn't been listening to the audiobook, I would not have been able to get through it in that paperback. No way, no how. In the beginning, there is a lot of exposition and there is a lot of info dumping going on because I understand that you need to kind of explain what this world essentially has come to. It's 2044, it's about 30 years into the future, but I don't think it would be needed to explain all of this information, and it just felt like it was never going to end. <laughs> Very slow in the beginning, and then we get to kind of like the middle-ish of the book, and then it jumps forward six months within a couple of sentences, and I didn't understand that Wade, who is this person who is trying to find this gold, was doing nothing nothing for six months. This whole book is over the course of like a year and a half, which I liked that it wasn't something that happened in like three or four days, but the pacing was slow in the beginning. It was so slow and I didn't think I was going to make it and it just really kind of turned me off from reading it for a while. There was this one point where Wade kind of looks back at this one paragraph that Halliday references in his like almanac which is sort of like the bible for finding the easter egg and he talks about masturbation in the new era of technology or at least that's how I read it and it was annoying. In that little section Halliday also referenced uh, Marie Curie and I feel like it was for like the female perspective which I did not enjoy. I don't know why he needed to bring in someone and reference that without her finding masturbation she never would have been as great or discovered any of the things that she would have discovered and I didn't like the way he prefaced that James Halliday who is our Steve Jobs person is a narcissist and everything kind of like revolved around his death and he basically made up this game to kind of like live on into the future and I felt like he just wasn't perpetuating a lot of good ideals for people in the future. There's also this one little plot line where we see that Halliday was kind of in love with his best friend's girl, which I did not like because he essentially ruined his friendship with this person who he was friends with for a really long time over infatuation with a female who was not going to love him back because she was in a very committed relationship and I didn't like that he basically just cut off his friendship because he couldn't have what he wanted. 
bringing it back around to the narcissism right here. We only really had one real representation of women in this book. She is seen very perfectly by Wade, which I didn't like that he kind of put her in this box. All of this is basically virtual reality, so you can kind of make your avatar look like whoever, and then you can just play as that person, and that's fine. But I felt like he kind of made her this perfect little doll, and I didn't like the way he talked about her sometimes. I thought Artemis as a character, from what little we saw of her, seemed a very one-dimensional character. We really don't see a lot of her, and I wish maybe we had gotten like a perspective from her, because she essentially is going after the Easter egg as well, and she was doing great. She was doing these tasks and everything and she was kicking butt and I wish we had seen more of like her perspective or at least something from her because while she was our only female character we did not get to see a lot of her at all. And the last part of this kind of like non spoily section is that the references are so fucking annoying. There's so many. It's too much. Honestly, the references are kind of manic and all over the place and just kind of like thrown in, I feel like. It felt like Gilmore Girls on crack, except when you actually understand the references, you're kind of just like eye rolling and you don't really want to kind of be bombarded with all of these cultural references over and over and over again. Some of the references are deeply rooted into the plot and if you have no idea what these are referring to, you won't understand big parts of the sequence. And while I really liked some of the sequences, I didn't understand what the final kind of like game or boss was. I didn't understand what that was referring to, so I didn't get it. I was ambivalent towards the ending because of this. So I think because the references are so deeply rooted into the whole plot of it, it just doesn't work for a lot of different people and it didn't work for me. Oh, I rated Ready Player One two stars, by the way. Just wasn't my jam, it was okay. I don't know what all the hype is about. I'm gonna research, look at other reviews and look at other reviews on Goodreads and see what other people are liking about it because some of the stuff I just wasn't gelling with. After this, I'm gonna get into a little bit of a spoilery section. I'm gonna be talking about one major thing and that's it. So if you haven't read Ready Player One, I suggest you pick it up. I'd love to hear your perspective on it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. On to the spoilery section. I'm only gonna really talk about one thing and it is the fact that we could have had another representation of women and a woman of color and a fat woman. We could have had more representation in this book, but he decided to hide the fact that H was a black woman that we could have had throughout the entire novel, but it was a, not a plot twist. I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify it as a plot twist. I just, makes me think that even in this futuristic world, it's still seen as unpopular to be a person of color and then a fat person as well. I didn't like that that was what it essentially represented, that even in 2044 people still aren't comfortable being who they are because of society, and that bothered me. I feel like Klein could have essentially kind of put that onto Artemis, but he didn't and he schlepped it off to the best friend who barely got any screen time and I think H was probably one of like the best characters and I liked her a lot more than Wade because there's also one point where Wade says, I'm gonna keep calling her a him during the battle just to keep up appearances or something like that and I thought that was a little bit problematic because he could have easily said I'm gonna refer to H as a they or them and it just didn't feel right. That's basically the only spoiler I want to talk about. Since you've read Ready Player One, please let me know your thoughts. This is a very hyped up book. Let me know your perspective of it. Let me know if you liked any of the things that I didn't like because I would love to hear about it. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!